fresh off the G5 jet. I'm on my way to a brand new kit. There we go. I got I had to get some background music going on. Now, um, I did not want, as you can tell, I was rushing to get in the chair, but I did not really want to make this video. Um, I don't like reporting on uh, people's personal lives, really, because um, it's really none of our business. However, when it does, when your actions off the field and or in your personal time do or will affect the team and or franchise uh unfortunately we have to report on it now this can have some big implications on the kansas city chiefs uh and his spot on the roster um on monday afternoon interestingly enough i had to do a double take at the time uh it said 4 30 p.m i said 4 30 p.m no way probably a.m and i i had to read the sentence again Monday, 4.30 p.m., uh, wide receiver, Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver, Justin Ross, was arrested on a domestic violence charge, and um, uh, he, was he was arrested on two, two different charges. Domestic battery, I think, is the technical term, basically domestic violence, and um, destroying property a value greater than $25,000. Um, now, it says, one report said there is a felony, and the other one says he it was reduced to a misdemeanor. We'll get into the specifics here in a second. Um, there's also some audio from a 911 call that I'm assuming uh, the female that was involved, his girlfriend, I don't know the, the relationship. Um, there's 911 audio that we will play here in just a second. Um, I haven't heard it yet. I literally saw the news and uh, hit record. So, um, again, let's get into the article. Uh, it's kind of uncomfortable uh, putting somebody's personal business out there. But, look, I mean, it is what it is. Um, it definitely, knowing the Kansas City Chiefs, well, let's get into the article and the details, and then I'll give you my opinions uh, right right from there. Let's see. Share screen. Let's go. TMZ's always got the, um, the scoop on this stuff. So this is the article. Justin Ross uh, pleads not guilty. Mugshot released right there. It's also in our thumbnail. Uh, it says court record show. Now, this, was, uh, this article's been updated a couple of times. Um, already just because there is ongoing a new updated information and TMZ will go back and update their info on this page. As you can tell, they've updated the times here when they edit, edited the original news source. It says, court record show Justin Ross is facing two charges following his uh, arrest. Domestic battery with no priors as well as criminal damage. Okay, see the article I saw earlier? Okay, yeah, it was updated um said it was over 25,000 i think it was a misprint because right here it says 2500 and i i did find out and that would make sense because i did find out the items that he broke uh apparently was a macbook laptop a iphone 15 pro max a monitor uh and there was something else oh keys to a car apparently i don't know what he did threw him in the toilet i have no idea Apparently, he broke a laptop, monitor, cell phone, and car keys. Um, it says he is, however, scheduled to be released later Tuesday, today, probably right now, on $2,500 bond after he appeared in court via Zoom and pleaded not guilty to the charges. He's due back in court for another hearing in the case in early December. So that's a good, uh, what, six weeks from now. Basically, up in limbo. Who knows? Um, and we'll get into what the Chiefs are going to do here shortly. It says police also released Ross's mugshot to TMZ Sports just a minute ago. There we are. Um, according to dispatch audio obtained by TMZ Sports, the alleged victim told a 911 operator Ross was dragging her through the house and has torn up the house. Uh, the woman who called from a neighbor's phone after the NFLer allegedly broke her cell phone. 
Noted Ross had a firearm in the residence, but did not have it on him at the time of the incident, uh, on him personally at the time of the incident. Uh, let's see, jail records show... Okay, see, here was the here was the mix-up I was getting. It says, jail records show that the 23-year-old was booked on a charge of criminal damage of greater than $25,000. And as of Tuesday morning, he remained in custody. So I think what happened since the last time I saw the article, uh, they apparently updated it and had, it was 2500 Because that would, that would make sense. I was going to say, good Lord, that was an expensive laptop. What kind of iPhone is that? That uh, twenty-five thousand dollars worth of damage. It says court records show he's due to face a judge later Tuesday afternoon. For the details surrounding the arrest are not made immediately available. It says the chiefs, meanwhile, told media outlets Monday they were aware of the arrest but had no comment on it. Ross joined Kansas City as an undrafted free agent. Last year was his rookie year, two thousand and twenty-two. He was undrafted out of Clemson. Uh, he was. In his early days in Clemson, he was projected to be like a first-round draft pick because he's a prototypical, um, your perfect uh, physical attributes for a wide receiver. He's tall. He's long. He has a great catch radius. He's fairly fast for his size. Um, and those of y'all who have uh, been viewers of the channel, I did compare him physically to Andre Johnson of the Houston, Texas. Now, his career obviously is headed in a different path than Andre Johnson, but physically he looks like Andre Johnson on the field. Though he did not play in his rookie season due to injuries, this year he's logged time in all of the Chiefs' seven games, recording only three catches for 34 yards. Now, are y'all ready to listen to the art uh, to the dispatch? I have no idea how long it is. If it's you know if it's more than a minute or two, I might. Uh, it's probably a, a minute or two. Let's see. Let me turn this music down. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Here we go. Okay. Let's go back. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we got here. I have to see this stupid ad. At Corient, Lord, we believe wealth see. management begins. Will it still play? All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn this down. Begins and ends with you. I'm going to skip the playing the commercial because I don't want to get a strike on the channel. Goals but it uh, looks like it's a quick commercial here. Just a few seconds. We'll get to the audio. And again, I have not heard this, so I don't know what to expect. She called the, the police from a neighbor's home because he apparently broke her cell phone. So. It's time Let's see what we got here. Join All right. Let me time this. It's 55 seconds, so we're good. Now, let me turn the volume back up. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Three hundred one and three hundred four en route. Domestic disturbance. The RP is advising a Justin Ross is dragging her through the house and has torn up the house. He keeps coming in and out of the house, and he does have a firearm inside of the residence. She has not stated that he has the firearm on him currently. He is still going inside and outside of the house. Call taker still gathering information at 1446, 301 and 304. He also broke her cell phone. She's currently calling from a neighbor's phone. We're trying to figure out if that's where she's at right now. 301 and 304, I don't have any history at this address for this subject. The RP is currently at her neighbor's apartment, C. Justin's going to be a black male, approximately six foot four, wearing blue shorts and no shirt. And his grandmother is inside of apartment B. Damn, his grandmother was there too? See, he did all this in front of his grandmother. What the hell? You're supposed to be on your best behavior when you're in front of your grandma. Oh boy. Um, 
yeah so there you have it so basically the article explains um article explains basically uh excuse me the phone call basically explains everything the article said uh i didn't know his grandma was there at the time as well uh it's unfortunate but um and look who knows only those three people know what happened inside that home now the blame still goes on justin ross because look obviously there's a number of 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 no-brainers here right number one you should never have physical violence inside the home man on woman woman on man or vi- you know vice versa and number two you shouldn't put yourself in this predicament so he is to blame regardless if he's innocent or guilty because let's say his girlfriend was basically trapping him you know there's some crazy people out here what if this woman was uh you know what if he didn't do anything what if she's super jealous what if he got caught talking to another woman again we don't know but what if he did not hit her or physically harm her but she was so upset and so mad that she threatened to call the police um so he would not be guilty in that situation he did not uh put his hands on her or anything right now He's still to blame because he put himself in that predicament with that woman. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened because he obviously broke a cell phone, laptop, car key. So he was obviously pissed off. But if he did do it, he's obviously to blame as well. But he needs to put himself in better situations. Um, And that's just, look, that's maturing as an adult. You learn from your mistakes, but this could be a very, very costly mistake. He was hanging on to the, to the roster by a thread. We, at the beginning of the season, were wondering if he was even going to make the team. He cannot have any, any, any mishaps on the field or off the field. He has to be squeaky clean. He could not afford a bad injury. He could not afford to drop the ball and he could not afford to have any off field incidents, incidences. And unfortunately, uh, yesterday afternoon, there was a major incident, um, that happened. Now, look, is he guilty or not? I have no idea, but six weeks until his next court date, what do you do if you're the chiefs? Um, let's go look at it. Let's, let's go look at his, uh, salary. And see what what we're what we're dealing with because look he was an undrafted free agent right so that means they don't have a ton of money invested in him he was basically on a prove it excuse me on a prove it deal a prove it contract where look we'll get you and sign you on the team and if you show to us you're a badass wide receiver you can catch anything that's thrown your way and if you put points on the board and you stay out of trouble wink wink we'll sign you to a good deal that was not the case. He he didn't play that much in college at Clemson because he was injured. He's got all the physical skills, all the um, attributes you're looking for in a wide receiver, as we discussed. But up here, decision making off the field cannot have that. As you know, Kareem Hunt a couple of years ago, um, infamously had an altercation with a woman in a hotel that was caught and recorded, and they cut him. Like I think the next day. I mean, it was not a good look. Andy Reid has been known to bring on guys with a troubled past, um, i.e., and give them a second chance, which I am a believer in second chances. Um, After he gets done with this incident, uh, whatever the outcome is, whatever the outcome is, he deserves a second chance um, at playing football. But I don't think it'll be on the Chiefs. Andy Reid's brought in a number of guys, uh, like I just said, Michael Vick was one. Uh, If you remember when when Andy Reid was with the Eagles. Um, And look, the list goes on. You can, you can Google it. There's a ton of guys where Andy Reid gives guys a second chance, but that's after their initial situation is taken care of. And that's after sitting down with the player, seeing where their mind's at, seeing if they've matured from the situation. And if everything looks good, he normally, and if they fit on the team, if the cap fits, they'll give him a, a second chance. But, 
I don't think the Kansas City Chiefs will in this incident. Um, I think you have to cut ties with him. For for number one, you're the face of the NFL. Kansas City Chiefs are. Um, it's not a good look. And you can afford it. Now, what do I mean you can afford it? Let's pull this up. His contract. Let's see. He's 23 years old. Last year was his rookie deal. He's basically making, let's see, last year he made a base salary of $430,000 all across the board. Cap hit base salary. This year, he's got a base salary of seven fifty. dollars uh, Yep, cap hit seven fifty dollars all across the board. Next year, $915,000 all across the board. Base salary and cap hit. So he was basically on a prove-it deal. They had not that much money invested in him, um, and it's not a good look. You're the face of the NFL. Will they punish him? Who knows? Um, He has a court date in early December, which is another six weeks. So I'm not really sure because, look, on these deals, on these uh, types of circumstances, um, it's kind of like you don't want to – Look, like I said, it's not a good look, but you kind of want to see what happens, right? You kind of want to play out because you don't know you don't know what happened. All you know is the police report, and of course, the player when he gets released from jail gets back at the facility, and of course, he's telling his side of the story, right? But there's always two sides to the story, so it's almost like you want to let this thing play out, but you have six weeks those next court date now there might be some more details that come out over the next few weeks we don't know there might be pictures of what happened i don't know if there are um if he put his hands on her if she's bruised up um obviously pictures and video makes it way worse it it kind of depends on like how big the story is and i know that sounds bad but that's just the fact of the matter like when when ray rice um hit his fiance in the elevator we initially heard the report and you know said damn that sucks i can't you know i can't believe he did that and then when the video came out oh my god it was the end of the world and they boom they cut him so quick literally like five minutes after the video dropped and i know the suspension too with the nfl was way worse after after the video dropped so We kind of have to let things play out. But ultimately, I think the Chiefs are going to pass on Justin Ross and release him. I believe so. I'm not sure. I don't know what they do in between these six weeks. Do you suspend him? Do you put him on the NFL? Might put him on there. They have a list of... uh, uh, It's like a... I can't remember the name of it. But it's basically like a behavior list. Like for, for, for times like this where a player gets in trouble with the law... They put him on the list and I, I'm not sure if they pay him or not, but he may or may not come to the facility and be able to practice and stuff like that. We'll just have to see until the next court date and over the next few days, see what details come out. I'm sure the Chiefs are waiting just like we are to see kind of where they go, where they go from here. Um, it's unfortunate this happened. Um, I was actually rooting for him. Uh, and look, again, we don't know what happened, so I don't know each party the two i don't know the two parties involved uh personally um who knows what happened all we know is what come is what's from the report however in my opinion uh depending on what releases and more details although look if you break somebody's cell phone <laughs> and laptop and you throw their keys in the microwave and destroy it it's kind of hard to defend that right like if he didn't damage the iphone the laptop or the car keys, you know, you could have been like, well, I didn't do anything, you know, and there's evidence or there is no evidence to say you did something. So yeah, that's kind of believable. If like, I didn't do anything, you know, and there's no pictures, she's not bruised up. You can basically back your player if that's the case. But in this case, it looks like he lost his temper and lost control of his emotions and just destroyed a bunch of, a bunch of electronics. Um, and she said he he was dragging her through the house. So obviously that's not a good look. But um, but there were there were, other than that there was no physical damage. So we'll just have to see how this plays out. Um, if I was in charge, uh, I might release him depending on uh, the, over the next few days. We'll have to wait and see. They are rolling off of their last um, 
very very good win and i was actually preparing to do a game review for that I had a thumbnail made and everything and uh this news popped up but i will do a game review probably tomorrow i have the all 22 so i'm trying to cut some um plays uh all 22 yeah all 22 so i'm cut some plays so i can throw them in my uh, game recap for you and show you some examples and of of good plays and stuff like that so very good win and just to recap it real quick um i was very excited to see um uh, the offense basically explode um and as you know travis kelsey will take advantage of that zone defense all day every day mahomes and kelsey have a perfect match where kelsey will find that sweet spot right in the defense where in between that zone and Mahomes, his arm is so good and quick, and he's so smart. He just shoots the shoots the ball like a dart right to Kelsey, and they got something very special going on. But that also frees up the other wide receivers. But overall, very very good game play, game call. Um, defense played fairly well. Uh, I do like the play calls that were implemented into the game by Andy Reid. Mahomes is just so good. I mean, it's just it's freaking awesome. They finally had a breakout game because i was wondering how long going into the season you know these guys don't play much in the preseason and this whole wide receiving core is basically brand new uh not brand new but basically there's a ton of new guys in there so i knew it was going to take a few weeks for them to get rolling um since they don't really play that much in the preseason uh i didn't expect them to come out and look like they did in week one so bad they got embarrassed but I mean, it is what it is. So uh, I'm just glad the breakout game uh, came, you know, at this point rather than later in the season. So we'll have to see how they do against Denver um, this upcoming Sunday. I know Denver had a fairly decent looking game last Sunday. I caught just uh, a few minutes of it. So I'm going to go back and watch the Denver game to look at the defense. But I still think Denver's defense can be exposed. And I don't think Russell Wilson is going to be able to do much um, against our uh, Chiefs defense. So um, look out for the video. Uh, I will post that probably tomorrow. And then um, Fred will, um, Fred and I will post something here a little later this week in regards to the upcoming game uh, this upcoming Sunday. So thank you for your time. I do appreciate everything. Uh, appreciate the viewership uh, for Fred and Taylor Bell. We appreciate your time and we will see you on the next one.